Aloha everyone and welcome to the Poakalani Hawaiian Quilting Family. My name is Sissy and this video is the third in a series of videos that we made to show you how to make a 22 by 22 inch Hawaiian quilt top that you can either make into a cushion or a wall hanging. In the first video we showed you how to cut, lay out the pat the design and pin it and baste it to your background fabric. In the second video, we actually showed you how to do needle turn applique. And uh, I have a link for both of those videos down in the description. And uh, I highly recommend that you watch the videos uh, in sequence and in order so uh, you can see how to make the quilt step by step. And in this video, finally, we're going to show you how to do Hawaiian quilting the Poakalani way. So let's get started. First, before you even start Hawaiian quilting, you actually need to prep your fabric. And so that's what we're going to do. So if you watch our first two videos, you should be at the stage where you have your applique, quilt, uh, applique top. And so what you need to do, just take out all the basting, all your temporary stitch, and so you'll just have your um, Ulu, your tea leaf design, or whatever design you're making. And uh, this is your applique top. And then you're going to need your batting. And uh, I'm using actually a thinner, probably a three ounce batting. And you're going to need your backing fabric. And so we're going to sandwich it all together. And we're going to baste it and prep it for quilting. So all you need is your pins. Uh, once it's your top fabric is centered on your batting and your backing, just pin your center and all you need to do is pin your edges. We're not going to do too much basting on this because it's a smaller project. If you were working on a larger maybe 45 by 45 quilt you would do more pinning and more basting. In fact for the larger piece you would actually uh, do a hand grid basting horizontal and vertical and that's just so your batting doesn't shift on you when you're quilting so we're just going to go ahead and pin it and we're going to start your basting so again it's always good to have maybe four to five needles prepared for you so you don't have to keep threading your needle and the basting here is just on the edge and uh, you don't have to be too careful. Again, this is just a temporary stitch, so I'm gonna make it just a little bit larger. And I just wanna talk about the batting. Okay, so this is a polyester batting. And uh, the reason why we use the polyester batting is that uh, when my mom was learning how to, um, actually when she was quilting, that's all the batting that came in Hawaii and it was the polyester. It's what we got used to and then it's what we use. But if you are a die-hard cotton person, uh, go ahead and use your cotton and uh, that is fine too. And just to let you know, the thinner your batting, the um, flatter your quilted piece is going to be. If you make a use a thicker batting, maybe your eight ounce batting, it's you're gonna have more of your ripples in there. So we're just going to go ahead and complete the basting. Okay. So I think I'm going to continue basting this and then I'm going to come back when it's all basted and then I'm going to start showing you needle turn applique. So yeah, I'll be right with you. Thank you. Okay, I just finished basting the outer edge of the quilted piece and so now I'm just going to take off my pins and then we're going to be ready for quilting. Okay, so I have my, here my 14 inch quilting hoop and we're just going to open the screws here and then you, it comes in two pieces, your inner and your outer hoop. So your inner hoop is going to go inside and we're going to find the center. We're going to look for the center of our quilt because with Hawaiian quilting, you always quilt the center first. Whether you're doing a wall hanging, a full size quilt, or even a cushion, it's the center that's completed first. We're gonna tighten the screws up here. 
and uh, we're going to turn it to the back. You need to be sure that this is flat. So what you want to do is you want to pull the fabric toward you and you're going to notice you can see how it's tightening here. You don't want any ripples on your backing because you're going to be, uh, it's going to show up on your quilting. So we're just going to tighten this up, make sure it's flat, make sure your top is flat and always pull toward you, make it a little bit easier. Okay, there, you're ready to start your quilting. Okay, so, got my thread here, my needle and thread. I'm using a betweens needle, you want to use a betweens because it's a little stronger. And uh, like I said, find assorted needles and later on you'll find out what you're comfortable with and then you stay with that needle. So, what you want to do also is that you want to have some thimbles. The thimbles is, especially for beginner quilters, it's going to help you save your fingers and uh, protect your fingers. And so you can decide they have leather thimbles, they have metal thimbles, use whatever you're comfortable with. But I highly recommend, again, try to find your thimbles. Um, sometimes I don't use a thimble, I actually use my nail, but um, that's from years of practicing using my nail versus a thimble. And then when my nail gets sore, I actually switch off to my thimble. Okay, so let's get started. So when you have your Hawaiian quilt, where do you actually begin? We start in the mid middle. But when I say the middle, it doesn't mean that we're going to look for that middle center. You actually start on the outer edge of your center. So my first line is actually going to be here. This is where I'm going to start. And you're wondering, okay, so where am I creating my design from? And it's actually your pattern. So you're following your pattern, but inside on the design. So this is my pattern here, this is here. So you're just going to come down, follow your design, and that's my first line. So that's gonna set you up for your pattern for your next line in. And you're gonna go finger space in, and you're gonna follow your next design, your next line in, until you get a full circle. And so let's get started. And simple uh, tips is your lines your echo quilting line should be no smaller than your baby and no bigger than your index so let's go ahead and get started so for your quilting you're going to have one hand underneath your hoop and it's going to be pushing up the back of your hoop on your fabric and wherever you push up is where your needle is going to be resting on so this is my finger index middle finger so I'm poking up and that's what I'm going to be sewing on. So you take your needle, remember arm's length, not too long, and you're going to now hide all your knots. You're not going to have any knots on the backing of your quilted piece. So I'm going to go about a half inch away. I'm going to find out where I want to start on my stem here, and I'm going to stay in the batting. I'm not going to come out through the back. Here's my knot. I'm going to go through and you're going to hear that tick, and it's actually meaning it went into the fabric and it's in the batting. So we're going to start your quilting. So what you're going to do is you're going to make your heel as high as you can. You only actually need three fingers to quilt. Two to hold the needle and the one with the thimble is actually going to be doing all the work. So you're going to place your needle. You're going to make your heel and your needle is actually just going to touch just the tip is going to touch your bottom finger so you're going to go have my thumb and my middle finger and I'm going to place my heel make my heel as high as you can you're never going to drop the heel you're going to go right in front of your last stitch you're going to go down through all three layers as soon as you feel the tip of that needle put your thimble on top let go all your fingers you see I only have one finger and that's the one with the thimble you're going to rock back all the way, put your thumb in front, it's going to cut off the stitch, and there you go. Your first stitch. And you're going to go right in front of your, again, you make your heel. You notice I didn't drop my heel. You're going to go in front of that last stitch. You're going to go through all three layers. It's just the tip is going to touch 
your bottom finger, let go all your fingers, and you're going to rock all the way back, thumb in front, and push. And you just keep going. Next stitch, heel, place, rock, thumb, and push. Next stitch, make your heel, place, you're going to rock it all the way back, thumb in front, and push. Now we're only doing one stitch at a time, and we're also sewing to yourself. And uh, it's easier for beginners to learn to sew toward yourself versus um, even doing two to three stitches. In the beginning, just do one stitch at a time, stitch to yourself. Later on, when you start using the, doing the bigger quilts, then you will be learning how to quilt away from you and to the side. And we're just going to keep going. So you notice in this quilt here that I'm actually starting to curve. So what you're going to do is there's a curve here. And so I see the curve coming. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to twist my hoop just a little and follow the curve. That's all you need. Later on, you can probably do, you know, two to three stitches, but in the beginning, let's just learn one at a time. And I, I know expert quilters who just do one stitch at a time, and they are finishing huge, amazing 90 by 90 quilts. And then you just keep going and just learn the technique. Okay, so let's get started in the quilting. So we have our top on our hoop and uh, we have our needle and our arm's length thread. And uh, so now we can start the quilting. And so where do we start? Whether you're working on a 22 by 22, a wall hanging, 45 by 45, or even a 90 by 90, you actually do the center first. So I don't mean we're going to find the center and make a circle. We're actually going to start on the outer edge and then we're going to slowly work our way into the center and to close off that center. So I made the first line for you to give you an idea on where to start. And uh, I'm going to start here in the branches and no smaller than your baby, no bigger than your index. And I started here and I came around and that's going to be my first line. And then your second line will be about here. And you're going to bring it around. And this is going to be all your first line. And then you're going to finger space in. And you're going to follow your pattern or design from the first lines you make. And you're going to make your second line until you actually close your center. Okay, so let's start the quilting process. So you've got your quilting needle, your arm's length thread, and I have a knot at the end of my thread. And so I want to find my center here. I'm going to go about half an inch away, find my center. My needle and thread is in the batting. I did not come out through the back. You're not going to have any knots on the back of your quilted piece anymore. And we're going to push it through and you're going to hear it. There you go. And there you go. We're ready to start. So one hand goes underneath your hoop and you're actually poking up where you're going to be sewing. And so you're going to go ahead and that's what you're going to be sewing on. So you only need, let me get my thimble here, of course, everybody should use a thimble. And you're going to poke up your needle as high as you can and you only need three fingers to quilt. Two to hold the needle and one's going to be doing all the work and you're going to be quilting toward yourself. So you're going to make a hill and you're going to go right in front of your last stitch, going through all three layers and the tip of the needle is just going to touch your bottom finger. You just don't want, you don't want to poke it all the way till you bleed. It's just a touch. Make your hill. Needle goes in front of your last stitch. Give it a little bit length. Go through all three layers, just touches, put your thimble on top, let go all your fingers and that thimble is going to do all the work. You're going to rock all the way back. Thumb in front and, oh, missed it. Okay, place, rock, thumb in front and push. Make a hill, 
place, rock some in front and push. And that's all you do. And don't ever drop your heel. Your heel is always up. You're not going to um, drop it. You're going to be sewing on that heel. So place, let go all your fingers, rock, thumb, and push. We're only doing one stitch at a time. I have quilters who made beautiful king size and queen size quilts just doing one stitch at a time. You also want even stitches. If you're going to go small, go small. You're gonna go big stitches, go big stitches. Just make sure they're consistent. As long as they're consistent, your quilting will be beautiful. And um, just keep going, and I think you can see it from here. And we're gonna keep going. There you go. And uh, you notice my pattern is curving so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of like adjust my hoop turn my hoop and there we go I'm going to go right around keep going and make your hill high as you can and it's just a place rock thumb and push Make your heel, place, rock, thumb, and push. And you notice that I'm just following what I did on the other side. And there we go. So we have some quilters who actually um, do 10 to 12 stitches per inch and those are the quilters they call like museum quality or quilt show quality um, quilting and they purposely do it because of entering into different competitions but what I want you to do is I want you to find a stitch length that you're comfortable with I don't want this to be hard or very difficult for you. this is supposed to be very easy and very enjoyable and just keep bringing it up here again. So what I want to do actually is start coming on the other side, but I don't want to knot it yet. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to bring it in between the batting right here, stay in the batting, find out where I want to start about there, push my thread through. There you go. And you can come on the other edge. And then we'll keep going, just like that. But I want to show you how to knot it right now, so we can end it. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to knot this, so I'm just going to make a loop, go in the loop, hold the loop down with your finger. There's my knot, going back in to do one more stitch. Stay in the batting, don't come out through the back, push it through. And you heard the tick. And then just cut there, and it goes back in, and no knots. Then we get started. There you go. Okay, so our next line would be finger space in, and then finger space in until we close the center. So when you do Hawaiian quilting, you're going to do your center first, and then you're going to do your outer branches. So this is a breadfruit or the tea leaf. And uh, you can do whatever design you want. And you can also do what any design you want on your leaf. Just remember, whatever you do here, you need to do it on the other breadfruit. And whatever you do on your leaf, you also do, um, you want it very even and very symmetrical. When you're finished, for example, doing your breadfruit, what you actually want to do is you want to sew what we call in the ditch. And the ditch is between your design and your backing. You also want to use whatever color you use for your design here is you're going to use your ditch. So I am going to use the darker blue for my ditch. So again, I'm staying in the batting, not coming out through the back. And I just want to show you, oops, forgot my knot here. I just want to show you how to do the ditch. Push it through. There you go. So you're on the background fabric 
right next to the design and right on that edge and you're staying on the background fabric and this is the ditch and I love the ditch and this is where I tell people okay now you're in the ditch you can't really see your stitches so this is a good time to practice two to three stitches uh, per needle and uh, and then you just keep going right along the ditch right along this line so you're gonna do center first pattern ditch pattern ditch pattern ditch and then you're going to get to the outside where you do the echo quilting so I'm going to just bring out a sample for you to look at this is a sample it does have three it does have different designs so it just gives you an idea of different type of designs that you can use um, you can do when you're doing the Hawaiian quilting so you're going to do your echo quilting on the edge here from your outside finger spacing no smaller than your baby, no bigger than your index, and you're gonna quilt all the way out. And your last part of your quilting piece is you are actually going to quilt that outside edge right here. And that will basically complete your quilting. So again, it's like right here. That's where you're gonna be quilting. And then you're gonna cut off the excess and then you have your quilted piece. And from here, um, you can decide to make a wall hanging or a cushion. But this just gives you an idea. Also, with our class, I just want you to notice we don't use any marking pencils. This is your marking. It's right here, your fingers. And so please get rid of all your marking pencils and uh, just be creative in what you do. And again, the backing should be just as nice as your front piece. I hope I was able to help you in learning the Hawaiian quilting. Uh, it does take time, it does take patience, but one stitch at a time, I know you can do it. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment box. I will get back to you. And uh, I'm just so excited that we were able to do all three videos and you can see each stage. And I will be coming up with other videos other videos uh, with tips that I know will help you. Uh, with everything that has been happening, we haven't had been able to have our classes, so uh, this is one way I can bring our classes to you, and I really hope you enjoyed it. And from my family to yours, remember always, quilt with aloha, and thank you.